do for that kid. Yeah. And to come into an event like that and to see somebody being tormented and lifted and dropped, and there's nothing physically I can do to help this person. Yeah. Uh, you know, that to me would just, I, I just wouldn't like that feeling of no control, of not, and of not being able to bring any kind of resolve. You know, having to call somebody else in, I, that's what I certainly would do. But I just don't like that it would be something of that nature. Uh, I give you a lot of credit because that's something, I mean, well, you, you've also, uh, we'll take a moment to thank you for serving our country. You've served our country here oh, thanks. A, as well. So, I mean, uh, obviously you've got balls. You're not afraid to get out there and mix it up and be a part of the the action. Um, you know, and, and that's just different strokes for different folks. I, I just, you know, it's amazing to me that you would see this kind of thing and not think, hey, you know what? It sounded really cool when I saw the movie Exorcist to see this once, but I've seen it in person and I don't want to be a part of this anymore. And you, it's not all the time that you see cases that are that, you know, right in your face. Dave, it doesn't have, have to be more than them. once. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it, for you also, you have the little ones. And sometimes, and not all the time, and I don't want to say, you know, you can go to these events where you can have some fun and learn some history and learn how to do the investigative techniques like we were speaking about earlier. Just, you know, you, you, but you can bring something back if you end up in the wrong situation. So if you're a person who is a metaphysical person, just make sure you put yourself in a white light. If you're a person who's a religious person, put yourself in a what you might believe is a Christ light or a, or a God light or whatever you want to call it, just, and make sure you go in with good emotions. Don't go in drinking. If you go to any of these events, try not to. If you do have a drink, don't don't have too many that you're outside of yourself. Don't right. ever go to a place that could possibly have spiritual um, energy of any sort, um, not being yourself. Even if you're angry, right? And and that's what you're outside of yourself. Don't go into these. That's one of the things I've really tried to push in the lessons and the, the teachings I do for people on ghost hunting is if you're if you, if you just came from a big fight with your spouse or, or a friend, don't go into these locations. If your mind is not set to do what you're there to do and you're emotionally raw, you're exhausted, any of those points where you're just not fit and ready, this isn't like just a, a hobby, a gag deal. You're putting yourself in the line, and if you're not mentally and physically prepared for that, it can cost you. Oh, yeah. Even, even, even in your research, because all these research groups, I'll tell you one thing. A lot, some of the newer equipment that we have is from some of our team members watching other groups on the TV, seeing the new technology coming out. So all this research that all these groups, even the people that are going to be going to this event, they may even start a group in a couple of years. Mm-hmm. All this research helps because all of us draw from it. So, I mean, I, I don't have a heck of a lot of time to, to be able to, to see the new stuff. But when I do look at it, I'm like, wow, this is neat. You know, because I never, I never knew this. We're always learning. Yeah, definitely. I've got, uh, we've got Dave Considine on the air with us this evening, and we're talking about um, his work in the field of. Uh, now, you're a lay demonologist, like uh, John Zaffis and 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 the uh, um, Warrens, of course. Uh, and how can people find you in your website? My website is www.phantasmpsiresearch.com. Now, uh, also the Facebook is. I don't know the address of the Facebook group. Okay, so it's uh, www.facebook, Barb? Okay, facebook.com.daveconsidine. All right, I can great. never remember that. Right. <laughs> up on that stuff, you know? All you got to remember is facebook.com slash Dave Considine. And that's it. You got oh, us in there, right? Yep, so that'll get you in. So you guys can check it out. Add him on Facebook. Uh, become his friend. Learn a little bit more about him. Go check out the website. It's interesting. We come back, I want to talk to you about some of the cases that you worked on that were featured on A Haunting, because I, I, I've sure. said it repeatedly. That show to me is one of the most frightening shows out there. Um, I think it's it's fright- more frightening than any horror movie. And it's not because it's real stories. They just really film them very well. Uh, and they really get that creep factor going across the show. Um, so we'll come back. We'll talk about some of the cases that you personally worked on that were part of. And you were also a consultant on a total of 16 episodes throughout the seasons. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. All right, mm-hmm. stay tuned. We have more Dave Considine coming up right after this. You're listening to the best in Paranormal Talk Radio. I'm Dave Schrader, and this is Darkness Radio on News Talk 100.3 FM. Good evening. Welcome back to the show. This is Darkness Radio, your home for the best in paranormal talk radio, five nights a week, Monday through Friday. Tune in from 11 p.m. till midnight as we discuss the strange and supernatural world around us. Hey, one thing I want to get into real quickly before we go back to our guest, Dave Considine. We're talking about demonology. We're talking about the cases he's worked on. But one thing that we like to focus on on the show as well is giving back. Uh, we do a lot of prayer and healing requests. I've got one that uh, hits a little home, uh, close to home. One of, uh, actually, my daycare provider uh, that helped uh, raise my son, uh, Nathan, uh, her husband was diagnosed with stage 4 
uh, esophageal cancer, mm. and it is inoperable. And uh, we just ask that you put out as much prayer and healing as you possibly can for Chad Groshen up in uh, the Lindstrom, Chisago area. Um, and keep him in your thoughts and prayers. He is the father of uh, children and, and uh, husband and uh, just a beloved member of the, the community, and um, he's really facing a, a dark time. Uh, we need a miracle, folks, so I'm just asking that uh, wherever you are, just take a moment to just ask God for, for uh, help or whatever uh, deity you believe in to uh, help him and send energy, Reiki, healing, whatever, any ideas that you have. Uh, if you know anybody that's done this, faced it, and beat it, email me at dave at darknessradio.com. Anything would be great. Well, we're back with our guest, Dave Considine, and we're talking to him. Uh, we were mentioning before the break that you've, uh, you worked on the Haunting series. That's correct. On, this, um, the, the, the shows, some of them were directly, it was, one, it was seasons one through four. Mm-hmm. The fifth one I didn't work on. It okay. was a change of, um, well, the writers, uh, a couple of the writers changed, and the, the producer that was working, I was working with Joe Mondre, that was changed. I, we actually went from Joe Mondre to, what was the other uh, lady's name? Um, Lisa Lucera. Uh, so we went from Joe Madre, and then Lisa Lucera had picked up, and then it was changed also again. There was a, a producer that had come from, uh, I believe it was um, the FBI files. Okay. And I didn't work with the fifth one. All right. But now some of the episodes, are, some of the cases were actually based on cases you worked on, correct? Correct. Yep. All right. And then you consulted on a total of 16 cases, though, overall on the show? Yeah, even uh, like at Lorraine's, I believe it was called The Dark Side. Um, where the house was, uh, the, I don't know if you remember this episode, where they went in, there was a crazy family downstairs, and the guy told them, don't go upstairs. Mm-hmm. Remember that one? Right. Yeah, I think it was the dark side, that one, too. Very cool. Well, let's talk about that. I know on your site you've got some information on a couple of them. Hell House from Season 1. And oh. you, you said oh, that yeah. it was really unfortunate because the story to try to be crammed in one hour, and here we're asking you to give us a little five-minute synopsis. <laughs> but tell me a little bit about that case. And I'd love to have you come back, and maybe we could flesh okay. out over a couple of months, we could flesh out uh, some of these cases in a full hour with you and kind of talk about what happened. But Absolutely. can you give me, a little, uh, give me a little feel for some of these cases that you worked on? Well, that particular house, that particular case, uh, we believed that at one time it was a brothel. And it was quite a few, when we had brought individuals in there to discern the property, there was a few things that went on in the house that were um, you know, murder or had been committed in the house. Uh, also, the property that was surrounding the house had Indian type. Um, we were finding things in the soil. We actually found uh, what looked like a bear's tooth or a wolf's tooth. We found some turquoise. We found some other, uh, what looked like. Um, Indian type uh, basket. Um, it was it was like parts of it were in the ground because they were doing excavation. So this property had a a plethora of things that were going on. You know, over periods of time, mm-hmm. and just changed over. But uh, she had bought the property. She had no idea about what was you know what was uh, you know about it. I mean, most people that buy the property they don't check in the history. She had a son, um, and he was having some some difficulties. He had some some um, difficulties with the mind, and. The particular forces that were there were making connection with him. That was the first stage of this, and there were poltergeistic type, act, you know, there was poltergeistic type activity, not poltergeist, but poltergeistic activity. Whereas there was movement of objects. Um, poltergeist actually is when it's directed right uh, from um, the pubescent child, and seems to be only when the pubescent child was there. But this activity would be happening outside of the house and whatnot. But it seems to be that it was triggered. There seems to be a trigger point in these types of cases, especially when you already have property that's charged up. Mm-hmm. There might be mortal remains. It seems to uh, add a spark where you start having this activity where something will show up. The first thing that she saw, um, the mother, that as it were, uh, she saw a small girl that was crossing the road. She was sitting. She Her porch actually faced the road, and she was sitting there. And this small girl came walking up to her. She had a slight, what looked like a slight glow about her, almost like in a movie you would see, like a ghost girl walking up to you. And all the girl said was, why? And she disappeared. After that, they started to have problems when they were sleeping. Everyone in the house at the same time. So I mean, this was it was right off the bat they were having activity um, where it was it was singled out to the to the child at first. The child was experiencing some things, but then the whole family all at once. It wasn't uh, like your common case where it just it works on somebody, then it works on another person, it works on another person. After the child, everybody was experiencing it. Her 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 husband uh, was was he was she, her husband at the time or boyfriend? Okay, he was yeah she was married at the time. But they were having all types of activity in the house. Fires were breaking out. They were hearing banging sounds in the house that would keep him up at night. They had contacted Ed and Lorraine uh, on this particular case first. I was brought in on this case. As a matter of fact, I was working. Um, the first time that I had 
come in contact with it, Ed wanted me to come over with a camera to take a walkthrough of the house to find out, you know, what uh, may be going on. Lorraine was discerning. And Lorraine had picked up that this uh, property, she's one, one of the ones that picked up.